heartbroken parents recently called me asking for help. The son was in trouble. As we sat in the family room, we talked, grieved and prayed together. They are Christian parents who love God but found themselves in a painful situation. It is easy to accuse either the parents or the son. But the important question which came from them needs to be addressed. They asked, how did this happen? I have heard this question many times. Many parents have asked this question to me before. After years of supporting families through similar circumstances, I know that this teen's life-changing decision wasn't where everything went wrong. The real problem might have began much earlier. His poor decision emerged out of many choices over the years that left him unprepared for the moment when his character was truly tested. But we should not despair. God restores broken people. And while kids will always have freedom to make their own decisions, parents can encourage them to develop the character necessary to face future challenges. The Bible suggests a plan for effective parenting based on a few central traits. Through exploring these seven traits of effective parenting and a bit of your own personal history, you can effectively approach parenting with a renewed sense of purpose and direction stemming from your personal relationship with God. Do you know what frustrates a child more than anything else? I think nothing frustrates a child faster than feeling unloved. Unhealthy criticism and neglect leave scars not easily healed on many children. More importantly, our children filter and interpret God's love through the lens of their experience with their parents. If we cannot convey our love and respect for our children while they are young, we may lose the right to speak into their lives as they grow. Does this mean we pamper our children? Does it mean that we fail to discipline them or praise their every move? No. We know from scripture that we discipline our children because we love them. Just us. God the Father disciplines us. We engage in intentional parenting as we spend time with our children, help them, serve them, and give them good gifts. We look for opportunities to encourage and praise them when they do well, and we may discipline them according to the rules and regulations of the land when needed. Do you know what was the best parenting advice I received? The best parenting advice I have received is to use scripture when correcting, when teaching, and when disciplining children. We may use scripture in every instance of parenting. Sometimes this consists of retelling Bible stories related to the present situation. Often individual voices or passages speaks to the issue at hand. Parenting through scripture requires effort. First, we must know the written word of God. Second, we must pray for guidance before speaking. Sometimes this means we must table the discussion we are having to do research. We must raise our children to fear the Lord. They must understand His character. If we do not understand our Creator, life becomes muddy and unclear. It is only through knowledge of our sovereign Lord that we see anything close to truth. There is only one true God. He is holy, just, loving, and sovereign. It is vital that we give our children a clear picture of the one we serve. We do that best by helping our kids know God through His Word. Do you know what will be the foundation of children's behavior? I believe that the character of our children will lay the foundation for every single act in their lives. Building and developing character can be an exhausting endeavor. It may require saying the same thing over and over and over again. It requires parental diligence, loads and loads of diligence. Even so, we have a responsibility to help develop character in our children, to train them to be compassionate, honest, respectful, humble, loving, kind, hardworking, and trustworthy. We want our children to have integrity, 
to do the same thing in public that they do in private. All that said, man is sinful by nature. We are humans and we are prone to the worst traits imaginable. It's only through the work of the Holy Spirit that our hearts are changed and the fruit of the Spirit is manifested. Therefore, the parents should develop a mixed approach. For example, in my house, we train our children repeatedly and pray constantly, asking the Lord to help our children develop and mature. Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend, authors of the Boundaries book series, arrived that the purpose of boundaries in biblical parenting is to let good things in and keep bad things out. Hebrews 12 1 says that in order to run our race well, we need to shake off the things that keep us from reaching our goal. Ordering our home with healthy boundaries for kids and adults help us to do that. Being deliberate about boundaries for media, behavior, relationships, God living and vibrant faith means we do not let culture determine what is healthy for our family. Proverbs tells us, leave the presence of a fool for there you do not meet words of knowledge. If you do not set our own boundaries in our families, other influences, culture, extended family or trends will set our children's moral boundaries and we may become surprised and dismayed by what they have learned. As Paul begins his letter to the Philippines, he tells them how thankful he is every time he thinks of them. Gratitude is not just a polite reaction to something good. It is a cultivated habit and a vital part of healthy relationships. When we practice gratitude in our families, it helps children and parents fight selfishness, which causes division among families and friends. When gratitude is expressed on a regular basis and in deliberate ways, it helps our children learn to see all the good God does in our lives. A natural outcome of this within biblical parenting is that we learn to naturally praise God, regardless of how we feel in the moment. While he was in prison, St. Paul said something amazing. I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Paul learned to find peace in Christ, despite his situation. His personal happiness was not attached to his position, how well he was doing or what he was doing. Teaching adaptability helps our children find peace, a deep peace that is stronger than the stresses and trials of life. Peace counteracts the unproductive worry that causes us to lose our trust in God. This flexibility and resilience, grown in difficult circumstances, allows the family to face both hardships and joys together as they grow deeper in their faith. God's wisdom gives us direction for not only recognizing our mistakes, but also correcting them. In biblical parenting, it is no different. God's way of life is the abundant life. And this life gives parents the opportunity to watch their children grow up making good decisions and avoiding decisions they may later regret. And learning how to live out these traits in our parenting gives our children a model for living out his abundant life.